الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عبادة from head to toe worshiping Allah سبحانه وتعالى with every single part of our body this should be the goal of every Muslim because this is the purpose of our life and how can we be truthful with ourselves to be truthfully, sincerely applying that, not just saying it but applying that in our life and our relationships and our acts of worship this is the subject that we need to give more attention to. Before we get into the specific acts of worship that we do with the different parts of our bodies, we need to get to know the rulings when it comes to matters of worship. What do we mean by this? We mean that every single part of our body, either we are doing something that is an obligation, something fard, something wajib, an obligation, or the opposite of that, we're doing something haram, forbidden, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. Or we're doing something that is recommended. If a person would do, he would get rewards. If a person doesn't do, he does not get a sin. Or if a person is doing something that is makruh, disliked, if a person would stay away from it, this is a rewardable act to stay away from it. But if a person does it, it's not a sin, but gets the person closer to sins. And the fifth thing is to do what is permissible. Something that is mubah. These are al-ahkam al-khamsa, as the ulama, they call them, the five rulings that basically any acts or anything in the religion of Islam, we can refer them back to these five rulings. So, when we talk about the deeds done by the heart, what are the obligations? What are the obligatory acts to be done by the heart? What are the forbid forbidden acts? What is recommended? What is disliked? What is permissible? So that we make sure that we do the obligations, we stay away from what is haram, we do what is recommended, we stay away from what is makruh and disliked, and whatever is permissible, we need to know how to do the permissible without falling into any extremes. The same thing when it comes to the deed done by the head, by the arms, by the leg, and so on and so forth. So this is basically a guideline for us to get to learn matters of the religion according to the proper criteria so that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Another point is that these acts of worship, we would do it with the perfect love. We do it because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perfect love. The perfect love that the believers that they have towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this type of love does not exist in any way of life except the love from the believers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because anything that a human being loves on the face of earth, it has some form of, de of a deficiency to it. You won't love something from all aspects. There has to be something that you don't love about a particular person or a particular thing and so on. Except the love of the believers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, the one that created love itself. So he is the one to be loved the most perfect love. And this is the acts of worship to be done with this perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with the perfect submission to the creator of the heavens and the earth. We have to have both. Whenever act of worship we do, we have to have it with the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with the perfect submission. How can we do that, for example, in the act of worship of fasting, siyam? When we fast in the month of Ramadan, or optional fasting, we need to do that with the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes for us to do this act of worship. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it an obligation for us. And we know from the hadith Al-Qudsi that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِ بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمْ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مَفْتَرَطُهُ عَلَيْهِ Which means that my slave would never get closer to me by other than or more than what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala uh, made an obligatory on us. That means the most beloved deeds to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala are the obligatory deeds. 
So when you fast in the month of Ramadan, when you pray the night prayer, uh, whether this is an obligation and this is something that is recommended, but you do that because you know for the obligations that this is something the most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the obligatory acts. So you do that with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To establish the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to recite the Qur'an more. The recitation of the Qur'an brings the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hearts because the Qur'an is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As the hadith Qudsi where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبَّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّ افْتَرَضْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ Which means that the slave of Allah can never get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it an obligation. Meaning the obligations comes first. The most beloved deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the obligatory act. So when a person fasts in the month of Ramadan, fasting, person is thirsty, hungry, away from one's desire. This is by our nature something that we don't like, something that we don't love by nature. But you choose to do this act of worship because of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you would sacrifice your own desires because you know that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high, He loves from His creation to show this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is basically a very important pillar in acts of worship. And how to establish this love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically worshipping Him alone, reciting the Qur'an. These things that I'm mentioning, when we talk about what are the acts of worship to be done with our heads, our tongues, our eyes, ears, legs, parts, and so on, we need to make sure that we're doing these acts of worship while we are practicing the different acts of worship. We need to recite the Qur'an daily, constantly. We look into the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We recite the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That brings the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. That we have to do the, the striving and the struggle and to have the patience. That we choose what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves over what our desires and what we incline to do when it comes against to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. It's time for the salah. Time to establish the salah. But then a person might feel tired or lazy or whatever different natural desire that a person would have. The believers would leave this for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Leaving sleep to wake up and pray the fajr prayer, to go to the houses of Allah, to the masajid. This is not something that a person would do instinctively like that or naturally. And he won't find that he is inclined to do this by his own nature. We choose to do that. We choose to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this perfect love from the believers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and the same thing when it comes to the different acts of worship. We choose to speak what is right, to be kind to others, to move our hands and to do the different acts of worship according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. This comes from the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And comes with the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the perfect submission. We cannot do acts of worship without submission. This is the essence of the word al-Islam. If a person wants to be a, a true Muslim, we cannot just say I'm a Muslim. This is such a heavy word. A word that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the heavens and the earth for people to be Muslims. To be in that state of al-Islam. When we see that everybody had submitted themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unwillingly or willingly, they are born, they die, they eat, they drink. They don't have a choice in many of the things that they go through throughout their life. We as Muslims, for the believers, they choose to submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when it comes to matters of worship. That they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willingly. And this is basically what Islam is. So without submission, there is no Islam. Without willingly submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where is Islam then? We are Muslims not just in the masjid when we do the prayers, not at only at the time in Ramadan when we are fasting. We are Muslims at all times, whether it's during the night or during the day, whether we are married or not married, whether we are dealing with enemies or friends in any state, in anything that we say, in anything that we do, we're supposed to witness that we are Muslims. Right at that moment, or any moment, we are in state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That state of submission would entitle for us to get to know what to submit to, and we would act according to this knowledge. And that's why knowledge is the, is the basics. This is what we need to learn, and this is the subject of the series, for us to learn how to do the acts of worship from head to toe, according to the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 
And then what is left for each and every one of us is to apply this knowledge. Right? To apply this knowledge in our life so we get the knowledge this is half the way. The other half is to have the patience and the struggle and so on to implement the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So what we talked about in, in, in this episode is that there are five different rulings that we need to observe in the different acts of worship. Whether what is obligatory, what is haram forbidden, uh, recommended, disliked, and the permissible acts, and the two pillars of ibadah. The two pillars of ibadah, the one pillar is the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the perfect submission. Once we know this, and we know from what we said before about the conditions for the ibadah to be accepted, and that is to be sincerely doing the deed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, and doing it according to the way the Prophet sallallahu all of this together, we need to take the whole thing with us, inshallah ta'ala, for every single episode to come, to learn how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this comprehensive way, from head to toe, the entire body of the believers, till we reach our final destination and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those, the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with, among the people of Jannah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. قل إن صلاتي ونسكي ومحياي ومماتي لله رب العالمين Oh, oh.